Let's have a conversation about watch winders. We're going to do an unboxing and we'll find out whether we need them or not. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Okay, so we're going for a bit of a different look today. We're in the kitchen, got the TV behind us, got the lights set up. Uh, there's a bit more space to do an unboxing, so I hope it works. Please give me some comments, let me know if this works for you. Okay, so this is a Wolf watch winder. I bought this on MassDrop or Drop.com in America. I'm in the UK, so I bought it in America, bought it in dollars and got it imported. So I think these retail for about £500 if you buy them from Wolf. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. But they're, you know, four to £500 for this, this type. Now I paid, um, I've got an image here, for the receipt I paid on MassDrop £152. I also paid uh, import duties of about £10. So it cost me about £160 to buy it on MassDrop and get it imported, which at the time I thought was a really good bargain, and it still is. So you can go on to Drop. They have lots of Wolf products on there. So this is branded by Wolf as the Viceroy. It's the Module 2.7. Now Wolf tend to name their ranges, and this is no different. So the, so the Viceroy range comes in a series of different modules, all with storage in the top. You can have multiple sets of winders. Uh, this is just the single. Now Wolf are renowned for their quality, uh, certainly in watch winders and watch boxes. So go check it out. Anyway, let's get into the unboxing. So this is how it arrived uh, in this black cardboard box. Uh, I've got an outer sleeve. So I'll just tip it over, and just lift up this outer sleeve. What you'll notice is that everything is very well made, and good tolerances. So one outer sleeve there, so I'll just put that to one side. And then we've got this box. So this is a Wolf uh, Module 2.7. So it says style 456102. It says Wolf on the top. There you go. Wolf established in 1834. All right, so let's lift this top piece off. And inside we get an instruction manual. Very brief, but instructions nonetheless and looks like we've got some kind of fabric in here so let's just lift it out okay i guess the box is in that piece right so in here also inside this box um it's pretty unremarkable in there it's just a nicely made wooden box we have uh, if i can get it out another box here so let's just put this one down. And this is a box that says universal adapter, 100 to 240 volt. So let's just check that out. Okay, so we've got a universal adapter. I think this thing takes batteries as well. Uh, and inside, We've got plugs for most countries, so there's an American version, a European version, and a UK version. I never know, I never know what this one is. This is like the diagonal pins. If anyone knows, let me know, because I don't. And I guess for the UK, as it's where I am, I just slide that on there, and that is a UK style three pin plug. Right, and so here we have the watch winder. So let's just pull this wonderful sack, I'm gonna call it. You could use this for your, hanging up on the end of your bed for Christmas. Um, and we reveal the watch winder itself. Now this watch winder is more than just a winder. So look at this sack here. There's a wolf. I suppose you could use that to put your swag in there or whatever. Let's just uh, put that to one side as well. So this is a wolf watch, watch winder and storage. So it comes with storage for three additional watches in the top. Now the winder is supplied with these cushions here. So three watch cushions. We've got a key here, so there's a locking portion on the front here, so if you want to lock it, not that that'll deter anyone. And then to open the front, push that button in, lift it up, and we're revealing the compartment here where the winding takes place. So we have this quite nice um, cushion here. Now you can get these in different sizes. This one is the, the larger size, but it does squeeze down 
for my watches. So what I'm going to do is take off my Planet Ocean there, and without adjusting the band, uh, you'll see that it goes on. What we're going to do is just squash it down, and then it's not putting too much force on, so you can see there it fits quite nicely. And then what happens is that just clips in there, it's nice and secure, so that's not going to fall out. I hear that some of the old ones, this piece used to fall out. Okay, so you have some controls here. We've got um, direction controls. This one goes forwards and backwards, and it winds in both ways um, randomly. We've got an LCD display here, which tells you how many winds that you've set it to, and also for the timer. And down here, we've got an on-off switch and a timer switch. Now, one feature of this box, and one of the reasons why it's a premium watch winder, is because some winders, and I guess most of the cheaper ones, that you can buy. As soon as you switch it on, it just winds. It winds and winds and winds. Some of them you can set it for a set number of turns, so it'll wind for 100, 200, 300 turns and then turn off. But what this one does, it allows you to um, dial in the power reserve for your watch. So if your watch is, say, um, a 60 hour power reserve like this Planet Ocean, then you can set it for, I don't know, let's say 50 hours and it won't start winding until the watch is wound down almost to nothing, and then it'll start winding. And then it'll wind for the number of winds that you determine per day. Again, it could be anywhere from, I think, about 100 to 400. And then it'll stop and allow the watch to power down and unwind the mainspring, and then it'll restart again, hopefully if you've timed it correctly, before it's completely unwound and it's stopped. Now, if we look at the general construction, we've got this very nice um, quilted, um, I don't know what sort of fabric it is, it's a synthetic fabric, very hard wearing, but it's got like this um, black diamond pattern on it that's quite pleasing. I think you can get these with a purple or an orange fabric as well, which look pretty funky. And this is made of, uh, I'm going to say leatherette, I don't think it says genuine leather anywhere on here, uh, and I wouldn't expect it to either. And then at the back, you've got a power socket here for plugging in your power adapter plugs in here, like so, and you've also got a little compartment in the back for putting batteries in, so if you're unable to get it near power, uh, I can't imagine this takes a lot of power, so uh, I imagine those batteries will last for some time, and they are the larger D-sized batteries, and it takes two. Right, so let's see what it says in the instruction manual. So it says, congratulations on your purchase of this watch winder. Please review this quick start guide so that your automatic watch will benefit fully from the features that have been engineered into this product. And I like the word engineer. Uh, I'm an engineer, and when someone refers to the engineering within a product, that means it's been designed specifically for its purpose. So thinking about the delayed start, let's see what it says. So if you'd like to manually delay the start time using the right knob and press the plus or minus buttons to select 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60 or 66 up to a maximum of 72 hours. So if my Planet Ocean, I would go for 54 because it's a 60 hour power reserve. It says after 10 seconds, the setting is stored and the delay countdown will begin based on the selection setting. Now thinking about the winding program, uh, the module 2.7 provides 19 settings and three directional modes, giving 57 possible rotation programs. With respect to the turns per day setting and their parameters are listed in the table on the back of this leaflet. There is no magic number of rotations that will wind your watch. Things such as how active you are, how many complications your watch has, how frequently you use your chronograph function, how frequently you wear your watch, how long it has been since it was last serviced, and a host of other variables will impact what your watch requires to stay wound. You will have to make this determination to try the various settings and basically see what works. So on the back, there's a little table here that shows turns per day, the number of the cycles and the turns per cycle. What we'll do is we'll turn it on and give it a go. So let's turn it on. And then you can see the number of rotations flashing and the fact that it's bi-directional. You can move it up and down by increments of 50 for the number of rotations that you require. If we select now the power reserve mode, I'm going to put it up to 54 hours and this means that my Planet Ocean can run down to almost zero before the winding action starts. 
So one of the main advantages of having a quality watch winder as well is the silent running. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on, let it start going, and I'll put the microphone up to it and you can not hear how quiet this is. Hope you'll agree, the only thing you can hear is me. And the winding were, it's very faint. And obviously, people don't tend to store their watches and then leave their ear wedged against the side of the box. But this is the noise it makes, just at close range. So what are my closing thoughts? Well, I think this is a really well-made watch binder. I think the way I bought it was really interesting. Uh, I've never bought anything from America like this before. Certainly not off uh, kind of an auction or a countdown site like Drop or Mass Drop as it's called now. Um, so that was quite exciting as well to even see if it turned up, which it did. And it was very well packaged. So I think this is a really nice looking box. Uh, it does have the storage in the top. But what I have found with this is because the, the watches are stored in the top, and there's no glass lid. Um, it's just a bit of a monolith, so it's quite a big thing to sit on your dresser. Uh, it does wind very efficiently, um, and that does lead us on to whether we should have a winder or not. Well, you can listen to a number of experts, and as you know, I'm not an expert. I'm just someone giving you the benefit of my experience. Now, from what I understand, um, watches like to be fully wound and fully discharged, as you'd expect, because inside there's a spring that's tightly wound around the barrel and as the watch operates the spring gradually unwinds and if you use things like chronographs or other complications on the watch the spring will unwind quicker because of the power demands of the watch. Now that constant winding and unwinding is good for it, you know, it wants that and if you wind it tightly continuously potentially you'll put more pressure on the spring and it could lead to earlier failure. Now as a newer watch enthusiast one of my um, immediate thoughts was, oh, I need a watch winder. Well, actually, I don't need a watch winder. I don't have any very complicated watches. It's fair to say that if one of my watches hasn't been worn for a, a few days and it's discharged and the date needs setting, yeah, it can take me a few minutes. But again, that, that little interaction with the watch can be quite pleasing. It gives you some time with the watch just to feel the movement, understand the precision that's inside, and just appreciate the value and the care that's been taken to design and engineer the watch that you've bought. Now, if you have something complicated like a, an annual calendar, a moon phase, or something that requires a bit more intervention to get it running again, then perhaps a watch winder is just what you need. But I think for basic three hand watches, it's not necessary. I mean, I've got a Speedmaster, which is a manly wound watch. You yeah, know, it runs out, I, I wind it, it runs out, I wind it, give it a few turns, stick it on the wrist, and you're gone. But I will say, as it's a free country, countries, yeah, because this is a global YouTube channel now, that if you want a watch winder, and you tend to rotate your watches through the week, then buy a watch winder. Uh, I see no reason why you shouldn't. But what I would say, if you're going to buy a watch winder, buy one where you know you're going to minimise any damage that you're going to do to the internals of your watch. And buy a decent brand like Wolf, like this one. Now you can get smaller versions of this that don't have the storage. These are available from a multitude of sources. You can buy them from, again, Mastrop, you can buy them from Amazon, and you can buy them from Wolf directly. Um, I've had this winder now a year. Uh, I've had my other watch box over two years. Um, I give, I've given my son my other watch box now, uh, and I'm tending to keep all my watches in my watch roll at the moment, which you can see the other video for, my cheap vegan leather watch roll, so please check that out. And I'm thinking of selling this one on eBay. I think judging by the prices uh, on eBay relative to the value that I bought it for, I don't think I'm going to lose anything if anything at all really, so we'll see how that goes. And as and when it does sell, I'll let you know how I got on and see what sort of value it went for. So keep an eye on eBay, yeah, you might see one of these pop up very soon. And I hope you've enjoyed this video, I've certainly enjoyed making it. It's certainly nice to have a change in environment. And I think the desk where I normally film is a little bit too cramped, so doing unboxing has been a bit of a challenge there. So in the future I'll be very much at this table. Okay, so I'm Andy, this has been The English Watch. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care and bye for now.